Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. This is what living in the decline of an empire feels like. So on March 31st here, uh, 105 members of Congress sent a letter to President Joe Biden. Uh, I am going to read it and then we're going to discuss it. Dear President Biden, the House Gun Violence Prevention Task Force calls on you to take strong executive action to address serious inequities in the implementation of the National Firearms Act, which is the federal law regulating the manufacture, transfer, and possession of certain classes of firearms. For too long, gun manufacturers, in order to circumvent the National Firearms Act, have designed and marketed concealable AR-15-style firearms which fire rifle rounds concealable assault style firearms that fire rifle rounds pose an unreasonable threat to our communities and should be fully regulated under the National Firearms Act consistent with the intent and history of the law. The recent tragedy in Boulder, Colorado, okay, they go on to list some stuff, I'm not gonna read that, bunch of shootings, okay? Um, the National Firearms Act has proven to be extremely effective in preventing crimes with the classes of particularly dangerous firearms it regulates through a system requiring a background check, submission of a photo identification and fingerprints, and registration of the firearm with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Explosives. The 1934 law sought to regulate certain weapons because of their frequent use in crime. Some of the features exploited by criminals and included for enhanced regulation under the NFA include sawed-off shotguns, rifles with short barrels, and weapons with high capacity, with a high capacity of firing, like machine guns. The concealability and ability, the concealability and ability to use ammunition capable of penetrating body armor make these firearms especially dangerous on our streets for law enforcement personnel. We thank you for your commitment to preventing gun violence and urge you to immediately blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there's a bunch of things wrong here. Let's start at the top. Number one, concealable style. These are concealable style firearms. Concealable AR-15 style firearms. What does that mean? Yet again, the left is making up a term to make something sound scary. All we're talking about here is a rifle with a short barrel. In fact, rifles with short barrels have less velocity, so that would make them less deadly on a scale. It's, it's completely ridiculous. What they're saying is, oh, you can sneak them in places and then do more damage, but we already have handguns, and people use handguns far more often in crime and mass shootings than they use any other type of gun. Number two. When they list the guns, they talk about sawed-off shotguns. They're technically called short-barreled shotguns in the, in the actual law. Rifles with short barrels. Again, short-barreled rifles. I would love to hear them explain what makes a short-barreled rifle versus a non-short-barreled rifle. Because it's 15.9 inches, it's considered a short-barreled rifle, right? Anything less than 16, and all of a sudden, that's a short-barreled rifle. How did we get to 16 inches? I don't know, someone just made it up. It's a completely and utterly arbitrary number. So why is 15.9 inches concealable, but 16 isn't? Uh, I, I understand that they don't know the answer to that because it doesn't make sense. There's no logical answer to that. But again, they're just twisting words and making up terms that don't mean anything in order to feed Fear. It's an entirely fear-based legislation, like it always is with gun control, and so they're just trying to press on the fear button. Number three, my favorite one, a high capacity of firing like machine guns. You thought they were gonna say high capacity magazines, didn't you? That's what I thought. But no, they, they guns that are regulated under the NFA, uh, a quote, with a high capacity of firing like machine guns. Okay, so that's not what's regulated under the NFA. What's regulated under the NFA are machine guns, okay? And specifically, all that got regulated under the NFA, if I remember correctly, is that you need a $200 tax stamp to get a machine gun. That was it. Then in 1984, they came along and added and said, hey, or maybe it was 86, one of the two, uh, you can't buy any machine gun that was manufactured after 1986 or 1984, one of the two. Uh, and anything before that, you can, you can still own. You gotta go through the extra permitting process and whatever, but, but anything after that, you're not allowed to purchase, right? That's why machine guns are so ungodly expensive uh, because you have to buy really old things and there's just not that much stock left. 
So they can't even get that right. They can't even get right what, what's actually regulated. Again, high capacity of firing like machine guns. That's not regulated under the NFA, but facts be damned, who needs those? Number four, the concealability and ability to use ammunition capable of penetrating body armor make these firearms especially dangerous. Okay, first of all, penetrating what body armor? Again, they don't know this, but body armor is rated on a scale, right? There's, there's down here at like 2A and you can go all the way up to level four plates. And there's, there's a range of body armor in between. Certain guns can penetrate certain body armors depending where you are on the scale. Now what they probably mean, and they don't know that they know this, what they probably mean is a typical like soft armor, you know, triple A vest, um, that is worn by like a police officer or whatever, or, or 3A, excuse me, that's worn by like a police officer or whatever. Those don't defeat rifle rounds because the armor is not designed to defeat rifle rounds. The armor is designed to defeat pistol rounds. So of course rifle rounds will penetrate it because it's not designed to stop rifle rounds. If everybody was rolling around in level four plates that stop up to 30-06 armor piercing rounds, well then, well, then what? That then if should we outlaw 50s because it can punch through that like at some point any gun can defeat a certain amount of armor depending on where the armor is and any armor can defeat a certain gun depending on what the armor rating is so the armor penetrating argument is a completely relative argument it all depends on what armor you have versus what gun you have or caliber or velocity you have right if i have a thousand inches of dirt concrete and steel that's gonna defeat a 150 millimeter tank round. Like it, it just, it doesn't make any sense. But again, logic isn't their strong suit. Side note, what makes an armor piercing round? What, what, what does that mean? Armor piercing rounds is typically have a steel core. So the round doesn't fragment upon impact. So it's able to puncture through things. That's what makes an armor piercing round. It's just a round with a steel core that's designed to not fragment. Most rounds are designed to fragment. Why? Because that's what causes damage to people, is fragmenting rounds. Steel rounds with steel cores actually don't cause as much damage to people because they're designed to punch through things and not fragment upon impact. Again, don't expect them to know that. Also, what happens when they find out about the 5.7 pistol round? Is, are, I mean, are they gonna try to outlaw that? I know, I shouldn't give them ideas. Number five, and this is the biggest problem with this whole thing. Here, you have 105 members of Congress. Congress, whose job, whose actual job it is to make laws. Congress, who wrote and voted in the 1934 NFA Act. Congress, that's their job, they're the legislative branch of the government. You have 105 members of that body writing a letter to the president, who is the executive branch of government, who does not make laws asking him to make a law. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. They're writing to the president asking him to make a law. If they really wanted to change it, they should do their jobs and make a law. Now, it would be unconstitutional and there's all kinds of problems with that and we'll have that discussion some other time, but <laughs> the, 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 the American system is completely broken at this point because the members of the legislative body whose job it is to make a law are writing else to someone whose job it is to not make laws, asking them to do their job. Now, why are they doing that? Well, they're doing that one because they know they couldn't get it passed. Even now, even when Democrats control the House and the Senate and the White House, they're fearful that they couldn't get something like this passed. Number two, they're writing to him because it's just easier. If, if we just have a tyrant, if we just have a king who just on a whim wakes up one morning and writes a new law, well, that's a lot easier, isn't it? Than having to go through a legislative process and debating it in the House and getting the votes and getting it passed and getting it moved to the Senate and having it debated in there and getting the votes and then getting it to the White House. That, that's a lot of work. And you know, why, why do that when we can just pass our agenda by fiat? That's, that's what they're trying to do here. Again, if you don't think this is about tyranny or anything, you should just wake up because that's clearly what they're doing. They're asking one man, who they want him to be a king, please be our king, please make up a new law, and please rule us. That, that's what's going on here. The reason we don't do things like that in America is because we have a governmental system that is built on checks and balances. And a system is only as good as you work it. 
And the system is only going to ever be as good as you actually follow it. If you just do what you want, then of course the system doesn't matter at all. And that's what they're doing. They're just going to ignore the entire idea, the entire foundational idea of American government, which is different branches of government have checks and balances over the other, so no one gets too much power, so tyranny doesn't happen. That's the whole goal of American government. However, they're just going to try to circumvent that by asking the president to just be a king and just write a law and then everyone has to do it. We are not a nation that is designed to be ruled by capricious, arbitrary tyrants. We are a nation that is designed to be ruled by laws. We are supposed to be a people of laws, which means that someone doesn't just get to wake up in the morning and write a random thing and now we all have to do that. That's not how it's supposed to work. They don't care about that. They care about power. They care about their agenda. They care about forcing their agenda down your throat and they don't care how they're going to get there. They're not concerned with things like rights or rule of law or anything like that. They just want someone to arbitrarily make up a new law so they can get it passed so they can take things away from you. <laughs> I really, I really just can't get over the fact that members of the legislative body are writing to the executive branch to ask them to do their job. I just, it, it just really blows my mind how incredibly stupid people are. I mean, the stupidity, it, it, it's mind boggling. It's absolutely mind boggling. I can't overestimate it. Whew, two brave deeds and endure.